Hello everyone and welcome to episode one of the Hold Fast Garage. The project we'll be doing is uh, a restoration of my dad's 1975 Caprice Classic Convertible. It is the last model year that Chevrolet made a convertible. And in car culture, uh, being the last of something can can be as important as being the first. As far as what it means for where the car industry and where the country was at the time. Um, this was the last Chevrolet convertible. You could, in 1976, you could get an Eldorado, a Cadillac Eldorado convertible. Uh, but this was the last year for Chevy because, and uh, other car makers, Ford specifically, um, was Ford and Dodge were the big ones, uh, had stopped making them prior to 75 because it looked like Congress and, uh, and the National Highway Safety Administration was going to be making convertibles to... How should we say? Too cumbersome. Uh, the modifications you would have to, you know, the, the safety that you're going to have to build into these vehicles was just going to be too much. So, car makers just decided, well, we're just not going to do it anymore. This is also one of the last vehicles of this size. Eldorado Cadillac stayed big for a couple more years. Um, but cars in the mid to late 70s started getting smaller uh, engines started getting smaller this uh, particular beast has a Chevy big block V8 engine and get well got we don't know what she gets right now we'll find out when we get her running again uh, but got about eight miles to the gallon and, you know, when gas was less than a dollar a gallon, that wasn't such a big deal. But obviously, with the gas crisis and uh, a better understanding of what we were doing to the environment by burning all that gas to move these giant pieces of metal down the highway, uh, things changed. So that's, uh, that's my dad there in the bright green shirt. This is his car. Uh, he went to the dealership in 74 knowing that uh, Chevy was going to stop making the convertible after 1975. Sat down with the sales rep and went through the list of every option that you could get. He, this is his car. He ordered this car from the factory. And it's been in the Skellinger family ever since then. Unfortunately, as you can see by her condition, she's she's been through some rough times. Uh, my first memory, I'm almost 40, and my first memory of this car was of it sitting in our yard uh, by the side of the house. And us kids, you know, as kids will do, not knowing any better, we just climbed all over this thing, including on the top. Which, of course, Dad read us the riot act when he found that out, and I'm wishing now, <laughs> on the other end of it, that we hadn't done that, although that top may have not... There may have been nothing to, to help that top anyway. But she sat in our yard for years and years, and then Mom and Dad uh, moved out, out of town, out to the farm, and uh, the third fella in this video here, Mike, uh, this is actually Mike's dad's shed. Um, so dad, dad swung a deal to get the car put at least in, out of the rain, um, in this shed. So it sat here for probably at least 10 years. And I had expressed interest in the past, uh, and finally, now that I've retired from the Navy and I'm not gallivanting around the, the globe, uh, I've got the time 
and the patience and a little bit of resources to be able to actually do something with this car. So, Dad gave the car to me, and uh, so I got myself a trailer and drove back to Iowa. And and Mikey was only too happy to help us get the old girl loaded up on the trailer and uh, and get it out of his dad's shed. Uh, sadly, uh, Mike's dad passed away uh, recently, so the shed needs to be needs to be cleared out so that the estate can be taken care of. So here we go. Here she's moving for the first time in probably about 10 years. And we're going to go ahead and get her put on a trailer. As it turns out, the only way to make strapping a car to a trailer interesting is to do it in time lapse. So, you're welcome, America. So yeah, there we go. We're all strapped down, ready to roll. As I mentioned, this is uh, this is my dad's car. I will always think of it as my dad's car. I don't care how long it belongs to me. It's it's dad's car. Um. <clears throat> It was the car he drove to pick up my mom for their first date. It was the car he drove back and forth from Northern Iowa to Colorado, to Denver, to uh, date my mom. It was, he drove this car all the way through college. It's the car that mom and dad drove away from their wedding in. So it's it's the car is is what I'm what I'm really trying to say. I was a little nervous uh, getting it on the road, even if it's on a trailer, for the first time like this. I thought this was going to be the most nerve-wracking portion of the trip. That was not to be true. Um, there's some... Going down the mountains of West Virginia on the way back home, that was... Uh, there's no video of that. Um, but that was harrowing. Having 4,000 pounds on a trailer pushing you downhill that's uh with only really brake assist on the trailer uh yeah that was that was not fun but anyway here here we go we are we're up to about 25 miles an hour already
as I'm gonna say many times throughout this, uh, these, these episodes, uh, I am an amateur. Uh, I was a sonar tech for 20 years in the Navy. Um, for those of you who know anything about the Navy, I was in deck division for a while, uh, on two different submarines. So I'm reasonably mechanically inclined. Uh, you know, I know how to change oil. I can change a flat tire if I have to. Um, I've helped a buddy change out the brakes on his truck. You know, I, I can turn a wrench. But I'm no mechanic. I don't... You know, I'm one of those guys, if something goes wrong on the side of the road, I put the hood up and I just stare at it, hoping something will jump out at me and say, Hey, I'm broken. Fix me. But, uh... I've got YouTube to uh, to use as a resource. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of all kinds of restoration videos out there, and I've got Dad to call every now and again. And and you'll see in later episodes, Dad actually comes out and helps in person. So she's in good hands. Is is my point. Um, and I'm not going to turn it into a donk or anything like that. I'm going to try and keep it as as close to stock as as I reasonably can. And I know that there's going to be some surprises along the way. And I'm curious to see what they end up being. Um, this car, I should point out, um, despite being as old as it is, uh, has less than 80,000 miles, like 78.5, something like that. Um, so not a whole lot of wear and tear, really, um, on the engine anyway. Um, Iowa DOT salts the roads in the wintertime, so the undercarriage uh, is a little... That's a little scaly. There's some rust, definitely. Um, but, you know, the car's not not really been stressed too much. Just kind of sat for a long time and been neglected, unfortunately. So, we're gonna... We're gonna have some, some surprises because it hasn't been operated for so long. We don't know what... We don't know what we don't know. But I'm anxious to find out. I mentioned Dad bought this car from the dealership, ordered it himself. Uh, he paid about $8,000 in uh, 1975 for this car, which translates to 44000 some odd dollars in uh, 2022 money. So, it's, uh, it's a nice car. So as you can see, uh, even though it was under cover, it's she's pretty dirty. There's a lot of a lot of bird droppings on the outside. Uh, and Dad and I, we didn't we didn't film this part, but you're about to see she's gonna change color here because Dad and I gave her a good washing down with the uh, with the old garden hose. Later on, uh, you'll see how I have to deal with mouse turds inside boop there she is all bright and clean and well more clean anyway so we had just used two straps two uh ratchet straps to to secure the car on the trailer for the trip from the shed into town um, but we wanted to make sure we had her secured on at least four points 
because we're about to make a two-day trip from Iowa all the way out to Virginia. Uh, and there will be the aforementioned mountains of West Virginia, which even though they're not very tall, the Appalachians through that area, they're not, they're not super, you know, it's not the Rockies. Uh, but it's still, you know, you want to have the car well secured. It's no good to uh, get halfway home and dump the thing on the side of the road, you know. So Dad and I spent a good while here get her, getting it well secured, ratcheted down so she wouldn't go anywhere. Throughout the trip, I would stop periodically, um, obviously for gas, because now that I'm calling this thing, even my truck wasn't making very good gas mileage compared to what it normally does. And on the hill climb up the uh, mountains of West Virginia, I got down to nine miles to the gallon on my truck, which normally, at its worst, it's at 14 and at best, I'm up to like 23, 24. <clears throat> but pulling all that weight up the hill, that was that was rough. So we got her all strapped down, and uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure why, but Dad wanted to have it covered. I would have lost a lot of mouse turds if we hadn't had it covered.
So there it is, folks. That's the, uh, the highlights, anyway. The story of how... How the beast came to Virginia. Um, so we're going to make uh, episodes. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. Obviously, with a car this old, that's sad as long as it has, the engine is priority number one, making sure that it still runs. Um, and there's a lot of work just getting to that. Um, you know, all the rubber, the hoses and the gaskets, right? They've atrophied. <clears throat> so those are going to need replaced. Um, there's a lot to do. But I got time. I got no deadline. Um, so we're just going to plug away. Uh, I hope... I hope you enjoy. Um, each episode is going to be, you know, something new, some new new thing tackled, and either mastered or or massacred <laughs> one or the other. Um, but uh, if you enjoy, you know, like and subscribe, and tell your friends and share on Facebook and all that. Um, you know, spread the word. Let's let's enjoy this together. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the comment section later. <laughs>